for sure. I'm smiling. Speaking of schools, man, speaking of schools and schools um, and the effect that they have for this week's recommendation and review, I'm just so excited because we get to discuss hip hop in such a serious way. Um, just to give a bit of background, this week we decided to be able to watch. Um, this week we decided that we were going to uh, look at Lupe Fiasco, who's teaching a school, uh, a class at MIT rap theory and practice um there is a free lesson one that has come out um where he speaks about rap theory and practice an introductory course at mit you know i i was happy though i was taking notes i was like a, i was like a kid in class dude you know just sitting in on those um on a lecture like that um and it is we we love rap we love rap and it was really cool to actually see somebody take hip hop that seriously in such a academic approach, but still have it be so dope, you know? So I was able to pick up a lot of things from, from reading this. And I know for a fact, you as another nerd of this genre and also someone who's just as passionate about it, I, I was very interested to be able to hear what, what you thought going through it. Uh, if you took any notes or anything like that. Lupe Fiasco to me is one of the few people, figures, minds, creatives that I started following very early on and who still remains as a person that I look up to um, despite growing up and being disappointed and having the, the rose-colored glasses shattered on lots of individuals that I've held in high regard. Lupe was my favorite rapper for a very long time uh, and to the point where for a very long time I've been trying to tell people how much more than a rapper Lupe is and how much more than rhythm and poetry rap is in the hands of someone like Lupe. And I think his ability to break it down into a lecture, into a discussion in an academic setting like MIT is a testament to all of those things that I knew to be true. So shout out to Lupe, um, shout out to hip hop aging in a way that demands respect. And I was super excited for this, uh, which is crazy to say about watching somebody give a lecture, speak at the front of a classroom, right? This is actually a MIT course. And I was hyped for this like it was a Marvel movie. You know what I'm saying? So to sit and listen to this, I didn't end up taking notes. I was just taking it in, soaking it in. Um, and it was it was funny as as the quintessential hip hop nerd. I was definitely expecting him to get right into these very intricate examples of double and triple entendres that demonstrate the way that people can play with words to make something like hip hop sophistication apparent. And he went the opposite way. He started out very basic, very minimal, uh, and built up to something that I think was very was very powerful and speaks to to what hip hop is. So I'm interested to see, as you sat in class, what were some of the things that you took from it? What stood out to you? One of the cool things that they what that Lupe does in in this um, program is that he asks everybody in the class to write. To, to use rap or raps with an S as an acronym and to be able to explain it. Um, and in that process, I, I tried to jot down some of my own definitions um, of that acronym. And I'd encourage you to do the same while I read out a few others because I know you're, you're nice like that off the, you know, off of the freestyle shake and come up with something. But um, the ones that I wrote down when he was saying that was rhythm accounting people, um, rhythm actualized and personif uh, rhythm actualizing 
rhythm, actualized personification, and real ass perspective, right? Those are the ones that that I came up with in that short amount of time, like be able to put it to write it out, which is actually a pretty interesting way to go about engaging with hip hop. And I like that he started that way because already you kind of have to like do something that you say all the time, like rap so much and then have to then really get into the core of of what it means to you using those three letters. And it shows how dynamic this thing really is that even how how wide of a definition you can pull with something like just the acronyms. <laughs> Obviously, we also know Lupe for our YouTube audience to be a katana wielding sam samurai. <laughs> no doubt, man. No doubt. And I, yo, I, I I ain't gonna lie to you. I was scrambling to put one together while you was while you was talking, but I, all the everything that came up was he gave so many different examples of what it can mean. Um, that that's what was flying to my head. So I, I encourage everybody to go and check out the the lecture. It's available for free on YouTube. Um, I, I, can I read out some of the ones that I liked a lot? Yeah. From what they said, rhythmic access to people's souls. Mm. Um, rith, uh, what rhythm artistic perform? Right. Uh, it says uh, righteous artist is it righteous. I can't even read my own writing. Um, rebellious artistic performance and rebellious artistic poetry. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. That was that was that was really really cool. Um, I thought those ones are rhythmic access to people's souls is the one that that hit quite hard. And I think that's such a great description of what it is to us, right? It is um, something. I think what makes hip hop so special is that it's everyday life music, where some music techno maybe you can only listen to for a wide group of people. It's best enjoyed. It's for a concert or it's for the club or it's for a certain event or for jazz. It's also a certain event or, or setting. Opera is the same thing. Uh, country is for a particular type of mood. And they say hip hop is the music that you listen to in between going to all of those places, even up until you get to that place, right? It's, it's a, it's 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 everyday life music is what it is. So to be to hear some of those definitions that he put out like that, I thought were really really cool, man, and really spoke towards um, how us lovers of hip hop feel about it. And I think part of living with hip hop every day, uh, depending on how you listen to it, you know, everybody consumes hip hop differently. Everybody consumes different lanes of hip hop, but. I think for especially we, we would be called backpackers, right? We would be called folks that really get into both the lyrical side of hip hop uh, and its deepest potential for expressing various ways of living life and being in the world. Um, and it's cool if you just like hip hop just to listen to whatever future this new record is, whatever Metro Boomin is laying out for people like, that's cool. But as somebody who judges rappers, as somebody who writes bars, as somebody who takes hip hop super seriously in my own head, yeah, to hear Lupe talk about micro decisions, like extending vowels, um, the ways in which you decide to have a particular cadence to, to emulate a particular feeling, right? was just incredible and again I, I was really expecting like yeah but when we're going to talk into how you construct a double entendre that breaks down your current you know in front of you tangible circumstances but also the establishment as it exists for your entire people and my man went to the three little pigs right so basic my man went to the fundamental elements and emotions of life uh sadness anger surprise and dove into surprise and lays out how some of the best moments in hip-hop are solely based around surprise right it's the idea of the three little pigs right first pig first house wolf comes blows house down right second pig second house wolf comes blows house down third house third pig wolf comes house stays up and how important that surprise is, that moment of disruption of pattern is to learning. 
right? Not only learning in music, learning what a song is and, and how it's constructive and the story it's trying to tell, but also that's how we learn everything is through surprise, right? These new pieces of information. And so for him to connect those two things and give elements of illustration like Stan, right? Comparing it to, I never thought I would be comparing Stan and the Three Little Pigs, right? But Stan writes letter, right? M doesn't get it. It gets escalated. Stan writes letter. M doesn't get it. It gets escalated. Stan writes letter. Can't send letter out. M gets letter. Realizes it was Stan. Surprise. That moment, right? Yeah. Duckworth. If, question. If, if, you, if, if, you put, if you put a list of all the greatest... Of all the greatest uh, hip hop songs, with surprise, he's like this to me is the is the three best examples of this structure in hip hop. And then you put your own song there. Is that being conceded, or is it because it's Lupe Fiasco? It's allowed. You can only, wait, wait. Lupe song or your he, song? He, he did put no. Lupe put his song on there. He said these are the three greatest uh, examples of this structure in hip hop. And he put Stan. He put Janaya for, for forever. And sing about me. And Jedi Forever is his song. Yeah, it would be pretty conceited if you weren't Lupe. And if you weren't Lupe, <laughs> I agree. The argument, the argument he gave for it, um, I think holds and is really powerful. And he rooted it, seeded it, grounded it in the context of the city and what the city was going through at the time. He wrote the song. Uh I actually was jumping to to Duckworth, the other one he mentioned, right? Sing about me. Well, sing about me, and well, did he not mention Duckworth? Maybe that was no, enough. I was sing about me. That was you. You were like, I got, I got an example too, Professor. Yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. It does follow the same structure though. Duckworth does, follows right? the same structure. It's um, Kendrick telling the story of of it's Kendrick recounting the story of his dad, and um, he, he he holds that surprise to the end. So it's like story of his dad coming into uh moving from chicago coming into um uh coming into uh california and then he tells the story of punch who's the founder of tde coming into california and then the story is how they then meet and how kendrick's dad almost could have gotten killed by punch at that same time and that's the surprise element and like because cool if about- kill Ducky, top dog will be serving life while I grow up without a father and die in a gunfight. Gun Hip hop is beautiful. Hip hop is beautiful. And it actually, hearing how that structure works made me think about how do we tell impact stories with the same elements of it? Because they were saying surprise is one of the ways that actually evokes emotion for people and gets them to be able to pass on a story and share a story. So even in my own application, I was thinking, damn, I wonder how we can add that element of either storytelling or surprise element in the way we tell our impact stories so that it can be repeated and learned and stick in people's heads. So it was a really cool application, um, a really cool application of that. 100%. And that right there is, I think, what's so important about this course is because even, and I don't expect that most of the people at MIT or Harvard, where they're sharing the course, that sit in on this class, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't expect them to be deeply invested in crafting fire raps. You know what I'm saying? What's the criteria of the class, by the way? He, as he said, he said, you're going to have to learn. You, you're going to write raps, and your final project is an EP. Dude, how dope would that have been? while we were in college to be able to take a course with a final project as an EP? I, I did not have that opportunity and still turned in a song as a project <laughs> one time in college. <laughs> I mean, I even going to hold you. I, I gave myself that assignment. Um, <laughs> I believe that. I, I believe that. Believe it. Didn't you, didn't you engineer the song? <laughs> I did engineer the song. I was featured on it. <laughs> I was definitely a part of it. <laughs> I totally engineered the song. Can I, you know, one of my favorite parts about this whole thing, which I was actually so excited when I heard because it combines, I think it really combines something that you love a lot and something that I believe a lot. When at the end of the class, he opens up questions and one of the students asked him, why did you write? Um, he said, which came first, the album, The Cool or 
the concept of the cool or the song and album for the cool? God, I wish that man would finish the cool. But but, but at that something he said over there, which I don't know if you caught this. He said, I did the cool, which is his best selling album, because one of his heroes, Dr. Cornell West, which I know is one of your heroes, right, said to him uh, or, or said in a quote, we have to find a way to make the things that are harmful uncool and the things that are good cool. And I know that. And that's hence how the album The Cool came about. And I know that Dr. Cornell West for you is what inspired you to even pick up the art of 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 orating thought right and that sentence for me is something that i know you know that i've always said unknowingly that is something that dr cornell west said which is that my life's purpose is to be able to make helping be the coolest thing that you can do you know so i i thought i just thought that that was such a a circle moment in this whole thing man that a hero of yours that inspired you to do what you're doing said something that is a life quote that I live by and inspires me to be doing what I'm doing. And it kind of brings that together, man. I think, uh, I think this might be the most hip hop, hip hop moment for us and our producer included. No doubt, man. Shout out to those moments. Shout out to those moments. Actually, I've had the chance to see Lupe perform live on, on several occasions, but one of the moments I think that sticks with me, um, most in my life in terms of being in a space being in conversation with people who i see as titans of intelligence is i actually had the privilege to be in a room with cornell west and lupe fiasco at the same time Damn. uh at the smiley's youth leadership conference at ucla and everything that you just said about the importance of making what's harmful uncool and what's not cool or what's helpful cool was embodied in that room, right? Mm -hmm. And it literally, like you said, has inspired me to this point of impact, to this point of deciding that. And, and you, the important part about this is allowing me to drop all of the harmful things I was carrying just because they were cool. Right. That moment allowed me to let those things go because of what it provided in terms of a way forward and in, in determining what was cool in terms of a compass of what was cool. You feel me? And so I owe Lupe a lot for his music, for this lecture, for who he oh. is in the culture. Um, and if I could listen, follow up, check out every iteration of this that comes out i definitely would um and i'm just glad that hip-hop has this space to archive how academic it can be even as it grows in different directions for what younger people need it to be now i'm glad that somebody like lupe people like black thought people like quest love uh are being intentional about creating materials that undeniably articulate why this is one of the most important art forms to ever exist. Yep. I I think we didn't give him a whole show. I yes, think we sir. gave him a whole show. An hour 20 in this thing, man. Look, we know. We missed y'all if y'all can't tell, man. And we know 